What's up guys, Mike here with Cards Your Sports Cards. Back today to share my experiences from the past month to help you navigate your own sports card selling journey. If you're new to this monthly video, we'll talk about some of the sales I've made, lessons learned, strategy change, money made, money lost, and the current state of my selling journey as a card seller. Before we get into it, if you want to unlock the secrets of selling and investing in low-end sports cards on eBay, this channel is your go-to source for expert tips, honest insights, and strategies to help boost your eBay sales. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you want to stay ahead in the card selling game, maximize your profits, and take your eBay card selling business to the next level. You can also check out my other channel at Puck Mike White Open and talk about hockey cards. Kicking it off, as always, with our top sellers in sales insights, September 2024. The top five players sold this month. Nobody really running away from the pack here. Jalen Wright, Brock Purdy, baseball, hockey. Football still leading the way on percent of card sales by sport here. Hockey picked up a little bit, if I remember correctly, from last month. Not surprising since the season is just underway here, and I still do have a decent inventory of hockey cards, so even baseball wasn't terrible. Basketball still not that great, unfortunately. Go for the top three highest selling cards for the month. A couple hockey cards here in this Panini Rewards card. Almost $8 on these. Actually, $8 on all these. I actually have a lot of these in my inventory from one box that I opened. These hockey card inserts from this box have sold really well. Money made, money lost. All right, those top three cards, the Hasek, the Lindros, and the Panini Rewards. 553, 553, 432 on the net profit. So making some money there. That's great. Even some of these other ones here, $4, $3. So did okay. Money lost. Where did I lose money and why? Same story as it was last month. Pretty much the same story each month here. All these cards sell at low bids. I did think about raising my ceiling from 85 cents to 99 cents on the starting bid for my cards, but there's something about that 85 cents being a little bit more attractive to lower bidders in. I also don't know if I'm going to keep tracking this on a monthly basis. I might replace this with something else. Pretty much every month, the top five cards that I've lost money on have been cards that have sold at a low bid, which again, if you watch my other videos, I'm kind of treating a lot of those as like the dollar bin at the card shows. So if some of those sell low and I'm selling enough in other places to offset some of those, it doesn't bother me as much, but definitely don't want to be in the practice of losing money on card sales on a regular basis because you'll go out of business. Might start tracking something else here. I don't know. We'll see for next month. And if we go to inventory turnover, 2.63%, not too far off from last month. So still happy with these numbers, of course, trending down a little bit, but we had this increase here last month. None of this worries me. My cards are moving. I had a couple bigger orders recently, if I remember correctly. It was like five or 10 cards. So if all I'm selling is those cards I'm selling at auction, it worries me a little bit because that tells me it's just that low price that's drawing those people in. If I'm selling some of my regular fixed price listings, which I have been. And that tells me I'm stocking my inventory with items that people ultimately will want eventually, which is great. All right. So what worked for me and what didn't work for me last month in selling sports cards? And how am I going to change my strategy based on that information? One thing that worked is not buying new inventory. I think this actually might have been on my list last month. I cannot remember, but my overall accounting numbers were much better this month and I didn't spend any money on new inventory. Now, of course, you can't run your business this way all the time, especially in a business that sells products because you want to constantly keep getting new inventory, hopefully because you sold some of the inventory that you already have. But the bigger point here is making sure that your buying goals are consistent with your selling and listing goals. If you're only listing around five cards a day like I am, you don't need more than 150 cards or so each month in your inventory to be able to list. So just make sure you're not buying more than you plan to list on a regular basis because you'll have too much capital tied up in inventory, especially if you're not planning on listing all of those cards for a really long time. The second thing that worked last month was taking a break. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I got a new job a few months ago, which I'm very grateful for. It's allowed me to put money back into the business, but it's also a lot of work. And I have a family with two kids. So I've been cutting myself some slack a little bit. I was actually able to get away for a few days as well with the family. I did take a little bit of a break last month, give myself some time to get ahead on some things, and it worked really well for me. Selling sports cards can be a grind, whether you're doing low-end cards, mid-cards, even high-end cards. So always allow yourself to take a break. There's always going to be new players. There's always going to be new products. You're not missing out. Even if there's a card you wish you bought, that you didn't, that, oh my gosh, I could have made money on it. There's always going to be new players. There's always going to be new opportunities. So allow yourself to take a break. Another thing that worked is my affiliate links. Thank you so much to everyone who has made purchases. I've made a couple sales on my affiliate links. So I'm really grateful for that. Of course, I'm not getting rich off of these anytime soon. And the point of me talking about this is not just to say, hey, go buy these products from these links because I want to make money. Of course I do. Who wouldn't? But I also want you to know, for those of you out there who have YouTube channels as well, and I know some of you do because you've commented on these videos, it's a great opportunity to have another revenue stream for your sports card empire, as well as monetizing your YouTube channel. Again, you're probably not going to get rich off those, but every little penny helps. So don't
don't forget, a link to all the supplies I use for my business are in the description of this video. If you want to take a look, I really appreciate it. In terms of things that did not work or lessons learned, some of these are actually going to be contradictory to the things that worked, which I guess is part of running a business, right? And the internal struggle you have sometimes with how much time to devote to it. But one thing I think that didn't work was not enough content on the YouTube channel. Now, even though I did take a break, and I'll talk about this a little bit more and how I'm going to change my strategy, I still can be putting content on the channel. I think I actually missed a couple weeks with the weekly polls I do and the Wednesday wins post. But I know the shorts are also videos on YouTube that people use. So I'm contemplating how I can incorporate those. I'll talk more about that when I talk about how I'm going to change my strategy. I think especially now that I've monetized the channel, I want to make sure I don't fall off and I keep people engaged, especially people that have been followers of this channel for a while. So I would say that's one thing that didn't work well for me this past month. And the other thing I would say similar to the above is that I didn't meet my listing goals. The last week of the month is kind of when I took my break. And so I probably missed about eight or 10 days where I didn't list my five cards per day. I still did really well on sales. I sold one less card than I did the month before. And I consider the month before a pretty good month. So, but again, it goes back to just allowing yourself to take some time off. Yes, we have these goals. Everybody has their listing goals, their sales goals, everything. But that's the whole benefit of having your own business. No one is breathing down your neck if you don't meet those goals. And most of us have a day job. So we have some flexibility if we don't meet those goals. Even if we don't, if sports cards is all you do full time, cut yourself some slack. It's okay. So how am I going to change my strategy based on these findings? So in terms of inventory, I don't plan to buy a ton of new inventory this month, at least not bulk inventory. I could honestly probably make it a few months on the inventory that I have, maybe even more. So I really don't need any new inventory. And another thing I've been thinking about doing is going through my cards literally one by one in my inventory, looking at the listing and see if it's still a listing I think will sell, see if it's a card maybe I can put into a lot that I'm going to sell, or see if it's a card I can sell at auction. I talked about Ty Wilson and some past videos. If you don't know who he is, he's the guy that runs the Chasing Cardboard YouTube channel. And he talks about one of his videos, how they basically took down like tens of thousands. It might've been even like a hundred thousand listings from eBay. And he said it allowed them to really focus on look and see what they had in their inventory. So I'm kind of trying to be proactive right now because I don't want to get to that point. Once you list them cards, it's easy to just forget about it. You don't even remember you had that card in your inventory. Now, I'm not going to go crazy with this. I might do like three to five cards a week, but even going through some of the older cards, I've already found like, wow, I could sell this at auction right now. So I might as well do that versus, you know what, this could go into a card lot. It would be great. And I could really move that card. So something to think about just trying to avoid getting to tens of thousands of listings that people are just not buying and trying to keep my inventory fresh. Another thing I want to do is try to list in small doses. Now my listing goals is five cards a day and then one auction card a day for the first few weeks of the month. So that's really not that much. Some days I miss days and then I go and I do like two or three days at a time. But then it gets a little bit overwhelming because you got to take the picture. You got to do the listing. You got to inventory it. So I think just keeping on doing the smaller doses each day is what makes it manageable. So I need to keep doing that. And in terms of videos, I want to list more videos. I actually already planned a video where I want to talk about the difference between flipping sports cards and investing in sports cards. So that should be the next video here in a couple weeks. At the very least, I want to do two videos a month. One of those being this monthly recap from the previous month. But like I said, I also want to look at some of the shorts on YouTube and see how I might be able to give more content for you guys to help you run your eBay business. Ultimately, I want to give you insight into my business so that it can help you run yours. And I definitely think some short videos can help with that. I just need to figure out how to use them strategically because I see some shorts with other channels and it's like a waste of time. Why did I even watch this? So I want to make sure it's giving insight that my other content is not giving. And then some current market trends. What did I notice last month in the sports card market? I know I talked about this in the August recap video. I'm a little bit confused about the whole Burbank moving to Fanatics. Like I think it's still happening. I'm not confused about that, but I still see Burbank sports cards on eBay. So are they only moving like some of their cards? I thought it was like a whole exclusive deal. They're pulling all of their cards from eBay, but maybe it didn't happen yet. I know that's from a data perspective. There's a lot of stuff you have to do there probably. A little bit confused by that. I thought it would have happened by now. So something to keep tabs on, I guess. I don't think it means they've backed out or anything like that. I've also noticed a lot of other sellers going to card shows. Even some of the other channels that I watch is card shows, card shows, card shows, which is great. I can't really do that right now. I just have too much going on with my family and my job. I think it would be a great opportunity. I would love to do it eventually, but I've noticed a lot of other channels and sellers are going to card shows and they're having a lot of success too, especially ones that are pricing their cards competitively. So if you can do that and you're selling, go to a local card show, definitely recommend, but I've noticed those are really picking up a lot of steam. The bigger point is this sports card industry, I believe is really alive right now, guys. Yes, it's very niche, but it's very alive. There's a ton of players in the game. It's very alive. People are buying sports cards. They're selling sports cards. They're collecting sports cards. So, and I don't see that going away anytime soon, even if supply is way higher than demand. So keep that in mind. Don't let that deter you from getting into the market if you're thinking about it. And then lastly, things I'm thinking about. And again, I'm going to talk about this, I think in my next video, but one thing I'm thinking about is diversifying my portfolio and basically actually looking at cards to in 
invest in versus just flip them for profit. Now I'm not going to get into the details like I'll talk about this in the video about the differences between investing in like sports cards versus investing in something like your 401k or a savings account or something like that. But a lot of people will tell you, you know, investing in sports cards is risky and don't do it versus doing those other things. And again, I'll talk about some of those strategies and things in the other video and I'll come back and link that video. But there is money to be made in mid to high end sports cards. It's not just flipping cards for two, three dollars profit, even mid end cards for 15, 20 dollars. There's popular players that cards that sell for two or three hundred dollars and then a year later they sell into the thousands. So I'm really thinking about tapping into some of those and buying one or two of those just to see and track and slowly start actually buying some cards as investments. Again, nothing crazy. I'm not going to spend five thousand dollars on a card that's crazy. I'm thinking something that's like two or three hundred dollars, maybe even three hundred is too high, maybe two hundred dollars max and just tracking it and see where it goes. I have a couple cards like that in my inventory now, but doing a little bit more of that on a very, I'm talking like two or three cards and keeping tabs on those cards in the market and seeing where those go versus buying a bunch of collections and flipping a lot more low end cards. Something I'm thinking about. I don't know if I'm going to do it this month. It's just something I'm thinking about. I'm going to keep tabs on it. I could definitely see myself picking up one or two cards, maybe three in the next couple months that I consider more investment cards that I would keep tabs on and see if I could sell them into the future, not necessarily a month from now. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this month's recap. If you want to unlock the secrets of selling and investing in low end sports cards on eBay, this channel is your go-to source for expert tips, honest insights, and strategies to help boost your eBay sales. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you want to stay ahead of the card selling game, maximize your profits, and take your eBay card selling business to the next level. You can also check out my other channel at Puck Mike, where I open and talk about hockey cards. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.